Welcome back. Let's talk about sequential circuits. We have the abbreviations FSA and FSM. FSA stands for finite state automata, and sometimes it stands for finite state acceptor. We also have finite state machine, um, finite state machine, yeah, so FSM stands for finite state machine. These things are almost exactly the same thing. Um, we don't really need to worry about the difference too much, but anyway, you see different abbreviations for this. So why are we going to talk about this? Well, we'll get into the specific uses of, of FSAs and FSMs, but also this material provides the basics uh, foundation for regular expressions and formal grammars. Okay, but first let's talk about why we need FSMs uh, themselves. So, um, Finite state machines are useful as string acceptors. And this is used in compilers to check your code and make sure that it's syntactically correct. They're also used in digital design for uh, microprocessors. It's a simple way to provide a control circuit in, in, uh, that you can implement in hardware. Uh, there are other ways to control um, hardware at a very, very low level, but sequential circuits is just one of those ways. Compilers use these extensively to just process your code and turn it into assembly code. And then there's higher level at the other end of the you know abstraction stack, we have networking stuff, and that uses state machines. Okay, so the concept of state is something we need to define. State is the instantaneous description of the system at an instant in time. A classic example from physics is water. So we live on planet Earth, and uh, at least most of us do, um, and it um, Earth is a pretty nice place because it, it, it exists in a location in the solar system where water can exist in all three states, so that's pretty convenient. Unlike other planets like Venus and, and Mars, I'm not sure you have ice on, on, on Venus and there's probably very little steam on Mars, but Earth has all three. So let's use the term H2O because uh, we're talking about H2O in three different states. So H2O could be in liquid state, so it's water, or it could be frozen in ice, or it could be steam. And, um, oh, these are backwards, aren't they? Yes. I've got the, I think I've got the plus, um, you got to add heat to turn ice into water and add heat to turn, and then this needs to be negative. I'll have to fix that. Yeah. Anyway, so let's say you have an H2O, a couple of H2O molecules, and you take heat out, then you'll move to water, and then you take some more heat out, you'll move to ice, and you add heat back in, you'll you'll move to, uh, you know, it'll melt and move to water and, uh, and then back to steam. So at any given instant, your the H2O molecules are in one of these given states, one of these three states. And then the arrows indicate a transition, and the label on the arrow indicates the input. All right, so here's another example, um, a vending machine. So this particular vending machine distributes um, soda, let's say, and it uh, distributes it costs 50 cents well, that's pretty cheap for most soda machines but I actually happen to know of a machine somewhere that where you can buy sodas for 50 cents I'm not gonna tell you right now because that's kind of my secret but but imagine sodas cost 50 percent so um, you have these all these states s0 1 s2 s3 s4 s5 and the uh, initial state is this ace s0 and then the final state is S5, and the final state is indicated by a, a double circle. So you start here, and then you have these transitions, and the labels on the transitions in this notation indicates input slash output, all right? So the input is zero, and the output is 50. So um, let's say you start here, and you um, just push some random button, so representing an input of zero, then the output would be please enter 50 cents, like a little message you would display entering, uh, indicating please enter 50 cents. Or al um, alternatively, you could drop in a 50 cent coin, so your input would be 50, and the output would be um, please enter zero 
sense, right? Because you've, you've entered enough. And it'll move to the, the S5 state, which is the final state, and then the soda will come out. Okay, so that's one way to get to S5. But you could also get to S5 via these other paths. So you could start here and you could um, insert 20 cents. So that's your input. And then the message displayed or the output would be 30. So it would say, please enter 30 cents. And then you could enter another 20 cents and the message would, the output would be, uh, please enter 10 cents, right? And then it would move you to this state and then you'd enter another 10 cents and the output would be zero and, and it would move to the vending state and that would vend, all right? So you have these different inputs, 10, 20, and 20. These different ways it'll get you to 50, like 10, 20, 20 gets you to 50 and 20, 20, 10 gets you to 50 and uh, 20, 10, 10, 10 gets you to 50, right? So it's the inputs that you're doing and then the uh, slash output. All right. Um, here's another example from networking. When you have two computers and you want to establish a TCP IP connection on the internet, um, each computer will go through these series of states. So uh, initially your computer sitting there, it's, let's say it's not connected to anything, then it'll be in the closed state. Then when you want to um, talk to another computer, like say you open up your web browser and it's trying to talk to uh, Google or something, it'll move to the listen state. And then it's listening for certain inputs, um, sin or, or send or whatnot. And when it gets those inputs, it'll move to different a different state. And eventually it'll get to this established state where most of the communication takes place while you're connected to that other website. Then uh, when you want to close that, then there's various inputs and outputs and it'll move to a, a closing state and a, eventually a closed state. So don't want to go through this in exquisite detail because that's really networking theory, but it does use a state machine where the, each computer is in one of these states at any given time. There's a there's a program called Netstat. You can you could play with a little bit and see see what uh, what that thing does. All right, so let's um, get into the math part of this thing a little bit. We need a formal definition of a state machine. So a state machine has these components. It has an alphabet, which is a finite set of input symbols. It has a set of internal states S, and then it has a subset of S. Uh, called Y, which is the set of all input states. And this could be uh, any subset of S. So it could be the empty set, or it could be all of S. Typically, it's one state, maybe two, but uh, it's some subset of S. And then you have a starting state. You have to have a starting state. You have to start somewhere. And then we have this transition function, F. F is a function that maps the Cartesian product S cross A back into S. So basically it takes ordered pairs and the ordered pairs consist of some state and some input element of the alphabet. Okay, so the input is ordered pairs and then the output is another state. So it looks, it looks like this. So you have, for example, you could have the alphabet A consisting of the elements AB. Typically in this class, we'll just use AB because it's enough to understand how these things work. In real life, you could expand this alphabet up to the real alphabet or whatever set of input states you needed. Like up in here, we need a whole bunch of different kind of input states. But here we're just gonna use AB. Okay, then we have these three states, S0, S1, and S2. S0 is the initial state, and then we have these accept states, in this case, uh, two of them. So, uh, and then we have the, the uh, function f, okay? So f uh, maps every element of the Cartesian product s cross a back into s. So the input is these ordered pairs right here. And these, this is every element of s cross a. So Every possible combination of these three states, S0, S1, and S2, combined with these two elements, right? So it's going to be S0A, that's this one, and then S0B, that's this one, and then 
S1A, that's this one, and S1B, it's that one, and then S2A and S2B, right? So all of these guys. And then um, this state table, we call it, maps each one of those inputs into some output. And the output is just some element of S, right? So you, got, you have, uh, you have uh, some element of S for the output. Not necessarily all of them, but some element will be in here. Okay, this particular state table uh, maps to this state diagram. Okay, so this is a state table. This is a state diagram. And these are, you know, equivalent. These are just two different representations of the same thing here. So let's um, decompose this. So, whoops. So this row right here, we're taking state S0 and input A, and um, we're moving to state 0. So what it's saying is that if you're in state 0 and your input is A, you're going to move back to state 0. Okay, and if you're in state 0 and your input is B, you're going to move to state 1. And if you're in state 1 and your input is A, you're going to move back to state 1 this loop here. Then if you're in state 1 and your input is B, you're going to move to state 2. And if you're in state 2 and your input is A, you'll move to state 1. And also if you're in state 2 and your input is B, you'll move back to state 1. So I've labeled this transition with A and B. Okay, so what does this guy do? Um, we can think of this as a um, acceptor. That's a string acceptor. So if we think of it that way, then what strings does it accept? Um, so let's look at some strings and, uh, and see if this thing accepts them. So what about the string B? Just a little bitty string consisting of just B. So you start here in the initial state, S0. You always start in the initial state, S0. And then you process each element of this string. So we just have B. So if we're in state 0 and we get a B, we'll move to S1. Then we're done processing the string B. And then we look to see if we're in an accept state. And we are, because this has a double circle. So the string B was accepted. Right? What about AB, the string AB? So you start here. You process each element of this little string a b so first we do the a and that means we just move back to s0 and then we do the b which means means we move to state one and then we're done processing the string a b and we're in an accept state so the string a b is accepted um, what about the string a a b so we start here we go a takes us back to where we are the second a takes us back to where we are and then the b moves us over here we're in an accept, accept state so we're done this guy, three A's, just move around three times in this guy, and then the B takes us over here. We're in an accept state, so we're done. Um, what about this guy, B, A, A? So we start here, B moves us over here, and then the, the two A's will just keep us in that, in that uh, spot, okay? So these guys are accepted. Um, these, these guys down here are not accepted. So if we have the string consisting of just A, we'll process it, and by moving back to state zero and we're done and S zero is not an accept state, right? So any bunch of A's is not gonna get accepted. But if you notice, this string basically accepts any string with a B in it, right? Because um, the first B you get will move you to this accept state. And then the, if you get another B, it'll move you back to this, or it'll move you over to this other state, which is also an accept state. And then if you get another B, it'll move you back here. And, um, and once you're over here, you, there's no arrows going back to this S0. And both of these guys over here are accept states, right? So this guy will, you know, one B will get you over here to this left-hand side, and then, and then you're guaranteed to be in an, in an accept state. So this thing basically accepts any string with a B in it. You could, uh, you could build an equivalent machine. That is a machine that will also accept any string with a B in it, 
a little more simply than this, but this is just a random example. Let's look at uh, let's look at another guy here. So this guy and what does he do? Um, so we've got three states: S0, S1, and S2. S2 is the only accept state because it has a double circle around it, and then S0 is the initial state indicated by this arrow coming into it. And let's just process some strings and see if they get accepted. What about the string ABB? So we'll start here, A will move us over here, B will move us back, and then the second B will move us over here. So we, we would be done processing ABB and we're in an accept state, so ABB is accepted. What about ABBAA? So you go A, B, B, and then the two more A's would just take you around this little loop and you'd remain in state two. So this string is accepted. B is also accepted. Right? You start here and you just go over there and you're, you're done. Um, here are some strings that are not accepted. Like A, B is not accepted because A would take you over here and then B would take you over there. And you're, you're not in an accept state, so uh, it's not accepted. And, um, okay, so this machine's a little bit harder to generalize in a one sentence what it's doing. Like the last machine we looked at, this guy up here accepted all strings with B's in them, but this thing here, it's hard to say in a simple sentence what kinds of strings it, it accepts. All right, um, let's talk about uh, some characteristics of, of a state machine. So we can go back to uh, this guy over here, the previous example that we looked at to, 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 uh, to talk about these characteristics. So basically, a state machine needs to be um, complete and deterministic. Now, we, state machines have this function in them, right? And a function must be robust and deterministic. And that's exactly the, the same thing that's happening here, except they use the term complete instead of robust. But complete is really the same thing as robust. Okay, so this table, which is a function, needs to be um, robust and deterministic. And so what does that mean? So robust means that every element of the Cartesian cro product, S cross A, needs to be in here, right? That is, the domain needs to be all of S cross A. So every combination of, uh, of S and A needs to be in here. There's going to be six because there's three of these, right? The cardinality of S is three, and the cardinality of A is two. So three times two is six. So there's going to be six rows for this guy, right? And um, we could just check that every element is in there. You know, S zero A is in there, right? No, I already did this, right? S zero B is in there, and S zero, you know, S one A B are in there, and S two A B are in there. Okay, so it's robust. You could give it every input of the, or uh, every, uh, any, you could give it any input uh, of S cross A and it'll, uh, it'll produce some output, so it's robust. Okay, then it has to be deterministic. That is, these uh, combinations have to appear only once, right? So S0A appears once and only once, you know, once for robust and only once for deterministic. Okay, and uh, that's basically it. For complete and deterministic, you only need to look at the input side. Okay, as long as you have some, uh, some output, you're good, right? Um, we're not talking about whether the inverse is also a function, right? In this case, the inverse, the inverse of this f function is not also a function right, because it would fail one of the robust or deterministic tests, but we don't really need to think about that too much. But it is, it is true, but it's kind of an aside right now. All right, um, so we typically use these things as acceptors, because academically that's the easiest way to study these things, but keep in mind they are used for other purposes. All right, um, how do you design these things? Well, there's many ways to design them, including just guessing, but my favorite way is what's called the optimal path design method. Okay, so um, first we draw the optimal path. 
then we, we check for complete and deterministic. That is, we make sure that every element of S cross A is in there and in there only once, which kind of comes down to handling the remaining transitions for all the rest of the uh, alphabet. All right, so let's build one here. So this little dude um, is a string acceptor for this string, A, B, A, A. So we build the optimal path. We just list this little string on these transitions in a line. So A, B, A, A. Okay, so if you're in this starting state, you get an A, you move here, you get a B, you move here, you get another A, you move here, you get another A, you move here. This is a double circle, which indicates you're in the accept state. Okay, so if you're here and you get A, B, A, A, you will move to here, you'll be in accept state, you've accepted the string A, B, A, A. Then we just need to make sure that this thing is robust and deterministic. So uh, we've handled uh, S0A here, so we need to handle S0B. And then here we've handled, uh, we've handled what happens when you're in this state and you get a B. Now we need to handle what happens when you're in this state and you get an A, right? That for for uh, robustness. Here we've handled what happens when you're in this state and you get an A, so we need to handle what's, what happens when you're in this state and you get a B, and, and likewise for that, just to ensure robust and deterministic. So the solution for this thing ends up looking like It ends up looking like this when you fill in all the other transitions, right? So here I've, uh, you know, I'm handling A here, so I need to handle B, and I put it here. And here I'm handling uh, B, so I need to handle A, and I put that here. And um, you know, here I'm handling A, so I need to handle B. And here I'm handling uh, A, so I need to handle I need to handle B. Here I'm not handling A or B, so I need to handle both of those here. Now, how did I do that? Well, I have an algorithm for doing that, but we can also just kind of think it through a little bit. Um, so let me try and do that with a lot of talking and pointing. This is my way. So, um, you know, um, so look, here's what's happening. You, you know, you've got, this, you've got this sequence of strings that's coming along. And at, at some point, you're going to get the sequence that you are interested in. Boom, right there. And then there might be some more garbage babbling on here. So um, that's what's happening. This A, B, A, A is, can be thought of as a substring in some larger string of input. So... If that were the case, then um, you'd get an A, and you pro process it, and what does that mean? It means that that A might be the first uh, element of our substring that we're looking for. It could be. We don't really know yet, so we'll move to this state and, and hang out there. Okay, then what if we got another A? Well, uh, that could also be the first element of this substring. So let's just stay there. So that's what this little loop is, right? Then um, as long as we're getting these A's, just A's in a row, any one of, which of those A's could be the first A of our sequence. So we'll just hang out there waiting. But when we get a B, we should move over here because now we could be seeing the first two elements of our sequence. Could be, right? That's why I've labeled these uh, inside the circles. Um, with these little letters in here. This inside the circle indicates that I've, uh, what I've received so far. And so A means that I, I might have the first element of this string. AB means I might have the first two elements of the string. AAB, or ABA means I might have the first three elements of the string. And if I'm here, it means I've got the whole thing. So I've called this got because it's what I've got. Like if I'm here, I've got an A. If I'm here, I've got an AB. 
If I'm here, I've got an ABA. And here I've got the whole thing, all right? So if I'm here, it means that I've got AB. Now, if I get another A, I've got ABA. So I'll move to this transition. But if I'm here and I get a B, then basically what I've, what I've got is uh, ABB. And there's no way that ABB, there's no way that ABB is part of this, right? Because it's got two Bs in it. So you got to move all the way back here. That's this transition, right? Well, let's keep going here. If I am here and I get an A, it means that I've got the whole thing. And uh, so what to handle on the end? It depends on if you want to handle more than finding, uh, if you want to handle uh, finding this string more than once. If you're only interested in finding this string once, you can just stay here for any future uh, A's and B's. But if you're if you're interested in finding this string multiple times, you need you do need to go uh, you need to, to go back. Uh, let me see if I finish this thing first. Did I handle I handle all these transitions? I, I think I did, right? Because if I'm here, I think this one I might not have handled. If I'm here, it means I have an ABA, and if I get a B, it means basically I've got a B A B, which um, is it could be this part could be the start of of my a b up here right oh you can't really see it. this this guy right because if i'm here and i get a b it means what i have so far is a b a b and the uh, just these two could be the beginning of of the string i'm seeking so go back here right so let me let me fix this thing so that it can handle more than one more than one uh, ABAB in here. So let me say ABAB. So I want to find the second one here, let's say. So what would that look like? So if I'm here and I get ABAA, so it means I've got um, ABAA and now I get an A. What do you think? This, this, the only thing I could do is go all the way back to this state, right? So here we'll fix this. Okay, oh, what about B? So if I'm here and I get a B, it means I've got um, my sequence. That's why I'm here to begin with is I've already found a B, A, A, but now I'm trying to process a B. So I get a B, then this A, B here could be the start of my, uh, my, uh, my ABAA thing that I want. So I should go back to, I should go back to, uh, to here on a B. Okay. So basically I just modified this to detect uh, a series of, of the, of the, ooh, this should be ABAA. Uh, doesn't change anything I, anything I did. I did these right. ABAA, ABAA. Yeah. I just uh, should have wrote an A here instead. But I just modified this to accept repeating uh, occurrences of our input string in a larger string. The way it was written before is it would find just the first occurrence of ABAA and then it would stop and basically ignore anything else that was coming after that. Okay, that's this thing. Let's um, work a couple more examples, all right, to try and get a little better feel for this stuff. And then I'll show you an algorithm that uh, does this. Okay, what about this? This thing will accept any string, right? Because you start off in a uh, accept state, and then no matter what you get, you just move back to that accept state. So this is a very conciliatory uh, state machine. It'll accept anything. What about this dude? This guy will accept only the null string, which we have a special symbol for, lambda. So this is string is consisting of no characters, you know, zero characters. We call that the null string. Because you start in this accept state, and then if you get any input, you move to this other state, which is not an accept state, and then any other additional input will just keep you in that state. Okay, so if you have a null string, you'll be good, but any any string 
any other elements in the in a string will move you to this uh, this uh, uh, other state, which is sometimes called a sync. S i n k sync. Okay, what about this dude right here? Uh, this will accept strings which begin with a. See, you start here, and if you get an a, you move to this accept state, and then you're in a sync where no matter what what else you get, you remain in this accept state. So as long as you get 1a at the beginning, anything else is good. But if you get a b at the beginning, you'll move to this other sync, which is not an accept state. Okay, so this, this guy accepts strings that begin with an a. What about this dude right here? This guy accepts strings that contain two consecutive a's, right? You start here, First A moves you to this one, second A moves you to this one, and then you're in an accept state. Then no matter what else you get, you stay there. If you get a B, you initially, you'll just stay here waiting for your first A. And if you get a, uh, you get a B after that first A, you move back because we're looking for consecutive A's, right? So you, you have to have an, uh, you can't have a B in the middle. You have to have A, A to get here. If you get A and then a B in the middle, you start over looking for consecutive A's, right? What if we just want two A's and we don't care if they're consecutive? That would be um, that would be some other piece of paper. That would be this piece of paper right here. This thing, right? This just takes two A's. It doesn't care if they're consecutive or not. Um, just by leaving changing this, this transition right here so that it just stays here. Because you, know, you start here, A moves you here, which means we've got one A. And we can get a whole bunch of Bs, and we've still got one A. And then you get another A, and you move over here, and you're in the accept state. And then you just accept everything else that comes after that. All right? This guy will accept, oh, so this guy up here, uh, at least two As. Like, once you're here, you could get more As. But what if you want only two A's, or exactly two A's? And I'll put both of these up here. So this one, this guy accepts exactly two A's, because um, first A moves you over here, second A moves you over here, then you're in an accept state. And if you get any more A's, you move out of the accept state to the sink. Right? So this is just some examples to help you understand what's going on here. Um, the book work asks you to do a bunch more of these things. And I have an algorithm that will help you generate these, but it's good to do the book work first. So let's, uh, before we wrap it up, let's talk about why we like these. And one of the reasons we like these, at least, well, in a software perspective, is that the implementation is super easy. I mean, once you have this state table, you've pretty much got the whole machine, right? Once you see, once you've um, once you've defined a, a state table, right? Typically, we design these things by doing a diagram because that seems to be easier for humans to think about this visually. But once you've got this state diagram, you can turn it into a state table pretty straightforward, right? And once you've got this state table, it's super easy to implement because all you're doing is looking at what state you're in and what the input is, and then you look up the state that you're going to move to, right? That's, it's just a lookup. So it looks like this in, uh, in software, super easy. You, you, um, uh, the state that you're in is just a function of, uh, or, well, so you're only, you're only in the current state. There's the current state, this is a point of confusion for students, and then there's the next state. You're only in the current state. At any given instant in time, you're in one state. That's the current state. So, you know, uh, this is looking up the next state, right? I mean, like before this statement executes, you're in state, state. Then that state will change based on the state that you're in, right? So you're looking up the next state based on the state that you're in now and the current input. Okay, so, you know, before your ex this executes, you're in, oh, let's see, so you could be in state zero, right? Oh, where's my, uh, 
you could be in state uh, uh, you could be in state zero, right? Then uh, the input is a, so you're going to move to state zero. Or you could be in state zero and the input's b, and you'll move to state one. So basically, if you were in state zero and the input was a, you would move to state zero. The next time this loop executes, you'd be in state zero and you'd get a b, let's say, then you'd move to state one. Okay, so you just run through this for the string, the string that you're processing, each element of the string character, and you just look up the next state and uh, that'll just bounce you through these, uh, these circles here. And then when you're all done, if you're in the accept state, if you're in one of these two states, then you're good. Otherwise, you're not good. Super um, simple. You just, uh, you're only in one state at a time. Uh, sometimes I've found that students get a little confused. Uh, think about think about it like this: you're really only in the current state at one instant in time, and then the, there's one clock cycle where this thing ticks and this ex, this line executes and the state changes to the next state. You're not in two states at one time. Okay, I have a um, an algorithm uh, an algorithm for generating uh, these state diagrams, but you know what? I'm going to make that another uh, video. So um, go do the bookwork, and um, once you've done the bookwork, this algorithm should make more sense. Okay, hope that was useful to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.